Okay, I thought, well, let me just make sure the mic is good. We could build this sort of perfect toggle. Now, I looked at headless UI. Headless UI, I believe, is from the Tailwind team. Yeah, project by Tailwind Labs. And just close my door. And they have this really nice, neat toggle. And I looked at their code, just inspected it, and I thought it might be interesting to make a short video on it. Uh, and just build it with vanilla, you know. And I have some ideas as to using variables in an interesting way. And I'll kind of show you what I mean by that whilst we build it. So I built myself a folder for now. And let's see, code full stop. Cool. Let's position my window here. Okay. Okay, new file. Um, Index.html. New file, styles, and then the first one I always do is reset.css. And another one, main.css. And we'll just need a single, very basic script, JS. Okay, let me just click exclamation. Let me just zoom in a bit. It'll be a bit too much. Ah, this will, this will be fine, actually. Okay, so let's just link our stuff. So styles and main.css reset script. Oops source um okay, script.js oh, this is why i don't like typing live on video defer just so it loads after our html loads um okay this is nice and set up let me now think so the thing i'm planning to do is like a completely custom toggle we're going to start by adding a button okay now this button will be basically the body of the toggle, yeah. And okay, let's just give it a class of toggle. Simple as that. Role. Whoops, sorry. Role is switch. And this stuff is more for like um, when you're telling you know access accessibility and telling browsers what something is. In this case, it's a switch. Now, a switch is actually what Google calls a toggle as well. So it might be linked to Google. I'm not really sure. Tab index equals zero. Tab index zero basically means that the element will follow like a natural or normal flow of tabbing through an item. So you know when you click tab on a website and you can go through links, buttons, all that stuff, that all of those have tab index zero. Uh, I did look at Tailwind's or headless UIs. They did have tab index zero. I'm not sure why, because I thought a button would have it by default. Maybe it doesn't. So I decided just to go with their uh, direction. And finally, aria checked. And I believe this is used for screen readers, this aria checked. So a screen reader can actually tell you out loud whether something is checked or not checked based on this um, attribute and property. And we're going to actually need to change this in JavaScript later on. But we'll get to that. Then we have a span with a class of SR only, so screen reader only. And this basically means that when you use a screen reader and you go on this uh, checkbox, it, it's going to read out what it is. And in this case, it's just, I don't know, custom toggle or example. That's all it is, right? It's nothing more. Then I have a span, uh, I should just do a dot, um, toggle dial, you know, the little circle that goes inside of a, um, a toggle. Okay, um, let me think what else we'll need. To be honest, not very much. That's it, we're done with our HTML. That was nice and easy. Reset CMS, yeah, why not? Reset CMS, button, uh, outline will be none. Border, I already have that, actually. Let me just do margin is zero and padding is zero. Okay, this is just a nice low reset. Uh, you might see this, font size. All this means is that 
when I'm using one rem, instead of giving me 16 pixels, it's actually going to give me 10 pixels. Or 1.6 rem will, you know, give me uh, 16 pixels, and so on. Um, that's all this really does. I, I like using rems. It's more accessible and browser friendly. So if someone selects in a browser, they want large text. Um, it's rem is going to work really well with that, whilst pixels will not. So it's just an accessibility thing. And you might as well get used to it, to be honest. We've got our resets, and our resets should actually go before our main. With the cascade and stuff. And let me just think, I do have some code on the left that I'm just going to drag in quickly. Uh, the only thing I need to drag in is for the body, I think. Just grab it. Okay, body. Uh, this gradient I literally took from the headless CMS website, as I, as you've seen. I don't want to make it seem that I'm being super original with this. I just want to show you the code side. And let's just open this up here. Nice. Okay. So we've got all this stuff open. JavaScript can go on the bottom. Main.css can go... I wonder, can I... Put JavaScript only on the bottom over here. Yes, I can. That's literally what I wanted. So we use a JavaScript later on. But now let's focus on this. I'm gonna just space it out so we can see stuff a bit better. Okay. First thing we might want to focus on is setting up some variables. So let me just do HTML. And for now I'm gonna do width of 7.4 rem again i'm just taking the dimensions from headless cms width height was 3.8 rem uh the way to read this is 74 pixels 38 pixels just so you know adding will be 0.2 rem so two pixels and i want the calculation of padding on left and right i'm just going to call it sides and all we need to do is a calc bar padding times two. Okay, you'll see why this comes in handy later on. For now, that's all we need to use. And let's quickly create this SR only class. This code I'm also going to copy from somewhere else. Uh, because it's basically what it does is it hides this text from us, the user, but it doesn't hide it from any screen reader. So you'll see some weird stuff, position absolute, width, height, padding, overflow is hidden, blah, blah, blah. And now it just disappears, yeah? And it's probably gonna be hiding somewhere up top or whatever, but that's cool. Um, okay, we can just minimize this. We're never gonna look at it again. Okay, so let me think what to do now. Um, first thing I suppose we can style is button.toggle. Okay, width will be width. Uh, height will be height. Um, padding, yep, padding will be, as you guessed, padding. Okay. And the background and everything I'm going to copy. There we go. Let's see. Perfect. Um, border radius, I'm just going to put 10 RAM, so just maximum border radius in pixels. So we get this ni these nice smooth edges. Okay. This is actually a very nice solid start to a toggle. Let's leave everything else for the toggle and let's just go and style the uh, toggle dial. Okay. It's going to grab toggle dial. Okay. So I suppose we can make another variable now. And this is kind of where I thought I was flexing my brain a bit. And this is stupidly simple, but I really, I really enjoy doing this kind of stuff because it makes me need to think less um so automatic bars so the above ones are not automatic okay this one is automatic these ones are set these automatic so don't touch basically i'm gonna do dial dim dimensions yeah i just want to keep it short so the dial dimensions are basically a circle the circle will have the same height and width and we know it's going to be based on the height, right? It can be based on the width for a circle. So all we need to do is grab this height. So calc, 
and we're gonna have um eight nice take away uh sides yes okay let's make this a bit bigger now so let's see this width and dim and height is dim as well sorry i'm not used to live coding so i do apologize if it's a bit messy but I promise it, it'll be worth it uh background will be, just be white uh, we got nothing so far um display block perhaps aha we have to display block because by initially i believe it's inline and inline simply to be honest i don't really know i somehow forgot why it doesn't work but with a span you just have to set this to block I suppose that shows my ignorance of inline and block and the differences it they have. And board radius, of course, let's just do 100%. I believe 50% would work. And look at that. It's already nicely positioned for us, I think. And I believe, let's just zoom in. Yeah, just so you see everything super nice and crisp. And I suppose what we want to do now is let's just mimic the behavior. So when we toggle it, where do we want it to go? How many pixels do we move it? And I could, I suppose, um, and let's just query run. So I'm just going to call it toggle DTM. And I'm going to find a button with a class of toggle. Okay. Then toggle BTN dot add event listener. We're listening for a click. And then we wanted to do toggle uh, this might be weird toggle toggle checked um yeah that's really weird but whatever now let's just do an arrow function so toggle checked we want to grab the event and now we want to check if we have actually clicked the toggle button or do we yeah whatever so const btn equals and just for this bit i'm just going to make this a bit bigger etn will be e.target.closest and as long as it's a button with a class of toggle i'm happy that this is a button like this is all the security i suppose i need um okay and then we just want to toggle a class within it so we're just going to do btn.classlist.toggle and checked nice i think this should be good and now on our button dot toggle, well, let's just keep it to dot toggle, shall we? Just shorter to read. Toggle is, and then I like using this syntax dot checked because it reads a bit nicer. Toggle is checked instead of toggle dot checked. I don't know. Think of it what you will. I'm gonna select toggle dial, and this just means basically like a direct child. It's not gonna go to a grandchild or whatever. I like using this when I can. And let's just trans transform, transform and translate it. And we only need translate X actually. Let's do, I don't know, 30 pixels, shall we? Save, save, save. Okay, so you can see I'm kind of close and I actually know the answer, it's 36 pixels and you can see it's spot on. Now, I thought it might be fun to automate uh, this process so instead of me thinking and looking for 36 why don't we create a variable <clears throat> that does it for us so um dial uh, right i'm just gonna call it dial right or dial move let's call it dial move okay so now another calculation and i suppose the best way to explain this is we have a very fixed amount of pixels we can move within right and we know that some of them are already taken we can't move in those pixels so we have a total of 74 pixels and we know that based on our calculations and just do it sides so dial dimensions dial dimensions actually equal to 34. we know this because 38 
take away 2, take away 2 equals 34. Okay, so we know that 34 is a dimension, yeah? So we can do width, basically. Uh, we can do width of, so 74, take away 34. We still have some space left, though, that we have to ignore, which will be the sides, right? And the sides, of course, are 4. Okay, so all of a sudden, I believe we end up with uh, 70, what is it, 36? Yes, 36, I, I just said it. We end up with this number 36. Uh, let's do it one by one. Dial move. And we have a calc. Var. And just a width. Oh. Really hoping for some auto completion there. I think it needs a space. Width, take away. Um, sides. Oh, come on. Sides. And let's just see what this does. Okay, dial move. And inside here, we're gonna use var dial move. Let's see what this does. Whoops. Log var width, take away sides. Yeah, 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 this is right. Instead of sides, let's go with uh, dial dimensions, actually. It's a bit easier to show you then. Okay. Okay, so you can see I'm, I'm kind of close, but I'm going over a few pixels, yeah? And that's because I have to take into account all the space that is being used. So I can do one more. Take away var sides. Okay. And now it's perfect. And check this out. This is kind of what I found fun. If I change this to 10 rem, if I change this to, I don't know, 4.4 rem, padding to 4. Check this out. Everything is just nice, responsive. This is what I found fun. You can really automate stuff nicely if you just do it like add a tiny bit of math um and i don't think this is too difficult and i'm not great at math like my math is completely intuitive um so yeah i can just do basic you know uh, addition subtraction multiplication that kind of shit i don't know anything beyond that um but okay this is already visually we're almost there right so all we have to do is let's do, add some transitions, basically. So for our toggle, we want to transition um, the background, 250 ms, let's say. For the toggle dial, we want to transition transform to 50 ms as well. Okay, so this should already look nicer. Perfect. And let's just do button toggle Nope, let's just use the syntax dot checked. When, when our toggle is checked, we want to change the background. And this is another thing I'm going to copy. Uh, sorry, I stored this somewhere. Got it. It's just a darker color. Nice. So visually, we have achieved what we wanted to. The only thing now that we have to do really is to clean up our um, JavaScript a bit. Okay, so we want to update one more thing in our HTML, and that is this aria checked. Because remember, a screen reader will actually read out aria checked, uh, whether it's false or true, whether something is checked or not checked. So the way we can do that is we can access button dot uh, set attribute. I hope I'm writing this correctly. When I set the area checked attribute to true, let's say, okay. I'm gonna just inspect this and we're gonna move it to the bottom. We're gonna console log it. We're gonna console dot log btn, okay. Nice, look at that, aria checked is true. Uh, the only thing that we do have to change now, actually we don't have to console log it, it's already here. Yeah, the only thing now is that when I uncheck it, I have to set it to false. So how do we do that, right? Um, very basic check. We have to check if our button is already checked or not checked. So let's just create a variable for that. Uh, already checked, or is checked, is checked. 
equals btn.classList.contains, I think, or includes. I always forget. Uh, checked. Okay, I'm just going to console out this console.log. It's checked just because I forget every time. Uh, hey, it's working. Perfect. Okay, so all we have to do now is if is checked. Uh, if it's already checked, that we have already added this attribute of true. So we want to set it to false. Otherwise, we want to set it to true because it is not checked, right? So true. The reason is, is because this is checked returns us true or false. And if it's checked, it will return us true. If it's not checked, it won't. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, and I think we have achieved what we wanted to achieve so far. The only um, thing I would change, I suppose, is if we added an outline to when we are focused within this toggle. That's a bit more accessibility, right? Let's see how we can do that. So uh, button dot toggle um, uh, focus within, I think. Okay, and we want to do outline of um, the dark one. And we can actually also do outline offset. Let's say not point two. Okay. Hmm. Doesn't appear to be working. Huh. Ah, really? Uh, one pixel solid. Hey, look at that. So now we can, um, I'm tabbing onto this thing. I can click enter. And if you had a screen reader, you would actually hear um, that something is checked or not. So that's kind of cool, I think. Um, so yeah, I, I literally thought this quick video would be kind of fun to make. And you would learn a few things about, you know, CSS and maybe even JavaScript. I don't know. Um, sure, what your knowledge is. And just to give you an idea of how a component might look like, like this very custom toggle, you know? And the way a browser knows that it's a toggle instead of some random button is because we've given this role switch to it. You could build this slightly differently, of course. You could like um, you build with a checkbox. I suppose you would have a label or maybe you would have a div or something. And then we would have input type would be checkbox. Um, which would be um, style would be display none. When style is display none on a checkbox, it's still there. The checkbox still works, but we just can't see it. Uh, but if we do ID, let's just call it a checkbox. If we click on this label, which would have the same kind of background properties as a button toggle, just imagine it's the same thing, a label here. Yeah? If we clicked on it, because we have this four checkbox and because this has an idea of checkbox, we are basically clicking on the checkbox. We're checking it. And you could build it this way, and then you could add the whole, you know, area dial, blah, blah, blah. And I think the role is switched automatically for this then. But hey, it's kind of fun to build custom things sometimes. And this is the way to do it. Um, yeah, I hope this was somewhat enjoyable or fun. Maybe you got some ideas with these you know just playing around with variables and how you can automate stuff um yeah cheerio